Hey, howdy ho, Lions fans. Welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast. Day three, Senior Bowl wrap-up, Senior Bowl 2024. We are here to tell you everything that happened today. Break down some of the players, some of the uh, potential draft picks, the selections uh, that will be drafted throughout the NFL. Talk about some of the guys in their performance today. Uh, had some great interviews this morning that I think uh, we'll, we'll kind of refer to along the way. And uh, just kind of do a wrap-up, an overview, an overall wrap-up of the yeah. Senior Bowl and what we thought. Um that's it. It's a great show. We have a great show coming your way. Riz, you ready to go, man? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do it. I'm tired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's kick this off and break it down. Hey, but push the button all the way. Oh, we, are, uh, we are on very little sleep. <laughs> I think when do we like? Very little sleep. 12 hours in the week or 13 know. hours, something like that. I actually went to bed Earlier than I expected to last night because the breaking news of Terrell Williams being hired. Right. Right. I, I you were my witness. I left the beer garden very, um, yeah, very and, and went back to my room and, and wrote that up. And then I did not go back out again, much to my own surprise. Yeah. <laughs> very mature of you. Very mature. Some, sometimes you got to be the adult in the room. But you're in her lower. <laughs> so please oh. don't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, oh god, it's going to devolve. Okay, let's just like, yeah. So I, I'm, it's the tired. Yeah, let's, let's focus. Happens. So we are through three days. All three days of practices are now done. The American, the national. Yeah, it was. It was. Look, it's 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 long. It's it's a long day. Let's just kind of talk about what the normal schedule is, because yeah, I think it, it just kind of gives people folks because are, are kind of a, a little bit of insight because it's like oh, these guys are whining and they have to sit in there talking a couple times. Um, it all starts at four a.m. with the rise and grind. <laughs> get ready, get dressed, get showered, zip down to the uh, the convention center. We we leave at five thirty, so we can be here by well, we leave at five fifteen, so we yeah. can be here by quarter two, so we can set up. Yeah. His interviews start at six o'clock and then we would shoot those uh, throughout the morning. We would pack everything down, pack it up, haul it back out, put it in the car, head out to Hancock Whitney State Stadium. We might pick up Scott sunscreen one day. <laughs> Maybe a couple of donuts. Thank God for Dollar Tree. <laughs> Get a couple things, head out to the stadium. And from 9.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. there are the practices. Yeah. And then there's a break in the middle of a half hour from 11.30 yeah. to 12. And um, then it, as as the driver here, it's 8.7 miles, and I have not made it in less than 40 minutes once this week. <laughs> Synchronize your damn traffic lights, Mobile, please. <laughs> At least for one week. Oh, my God. So then we come back to here, this wonderful, beautiful convention center, to Radio Road. This, this legitimately is a beautiful convention center. Yeah. And the support staff that work here. Really good people. Um, they take care of things. They're doing a good job. Gift bags today. Came back to some good bags. Actually, uh, since it is the Reese's Senior Bowl, at some point in the show, I will have one while we're here just to <laughs> eat the product and support the cause. God, these are delicious. Uh, so, yeah, after we come back here, we'll do a show. We'll do a breakdown. We wrap it up probably about 4 o'clock-ish. Uh, break it all down. Yeah, takes an hour to, or so. Yeah. yeah. Get back to the hotel. Write everything up. Get everything packed up or whatever, you know, cut, coordinate and read it or yeah. the editing and all that stuff yeah. with Ash, get that done. And then we go out and it's dinner time, right? You have dinner and then you go have a couple of beers and how late do you going to stay out? Because you got to get up before the next day. Yeah. I mean, at least some nights it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that that does happen here. Uh, last night we did not get to dinner until like almost eight o'clock. Yeah. And uh, I have my sugar rush burger, the uh, barbecue bacon double cheeseburger in between two glazed donuts as buns. It was very good. My heart likes it. I've eaten very little today because I got so many calories and just uh, out of that. So I uh, feel good and love these Reese's. Um, my step count is unnaturally high, but I guess that's good for me. A lot better than your 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 donut burger. <laughs> your sugar rush. All right, let's get into it. Suck it. <laughs> Suck it. Today, usually Thursday is a little bit of a lighter practice, a little bit a um, little bit more special teams work, a little bit of kind of the finer tune stuff yeah. for the. It's like those like play game install, mm-hmm. like because most of the rest of the week has just been like getting to evaluate the players, and today is like, oh, we're playing a game in two days. Let's 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 have some plays. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So we did a little bit a lot of that work today. Um a little yeah. bit slower, but there were some some really interesting things to see. So let's rock through it. Why don't we start with you know, start with the national well, let's go in order. How about we start with the national team? Okay. Yeah, the cons- they they did the morning practice this morning. Okay. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Um there's this one young man. 
he he shown or shined shown sure. early early in the practice. Um, Dylan Lave, running back, University of New Hampshire. If you haven't seen the interview with him, he's actually a he's a, he's a spectacular kid. He's, he's, he's all personality, really man. easy to get a root for. Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, great story, the whole thing. Um, he broke one, and he Good. he 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 just took off. The speed is un, is unreal. The speed is is actually it's for real. Yeah, <laughs> his his open field speed is legit. <laughs> yep, like he's 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 he was clocked at over twenty miles per hour all three days, which tells you that it's consistent speed. It wasn't just like one fluke play where he got timed really high. Yeah, which I think did happen to a couple of players like um, Marshawn Neela, who we'll get to in a little bit. It was clocked at over nineteen miles per hour on Tuesday. I don't think he got over sixteen the rest yeah. of the week. Yeah, like yeah. that's not that he can't, but like. You get the fluke play here and there. Dylan doing it all three days. That that speaks to how legitimate his speed is. And he's funny because he's wearing number forty. So he, <laughs> and he happens to be white. So he looks like a fullback out yeah, there. Right? <laughs> Mike Olstock. <laughs> that he knew he is. <laughs> really, really something. It is. It is a, a, a visual cool. kind of trickery. But um, he 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 also put his hands on display. He had some really nice grabs out there. It was yeah. They they did a lot of red zone um, passing work, and he was very good there. Yeah, um, yeah. catches the, he can reach out and catch the ball away from his body, bring it in, take a hit. Chris Brouts, man, his yeah. cuts were sharp. He's he's gonna he's gonna be in the league for a while. Yeah, I have a feeling that yeah. he's he's another guy. Again, third, fourth, fifth round somewhere in there probably is sort of where I have him like mentally ballparked right now. Again, probably not like the Lions' biggest need, but like a guy that you, he's one of those guys you don't want to see in Minnesota, as an yeah, example. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he was we, we he he went down Radio Row after we talked to him, or we after we talked to him, he was going down Radio Row and we grabbed him for a second and said, you know, are you sick of all the the McCaffrey comparisons? Like, is that is that the thing that everyone compares you to? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, who would you compare yourself with? He's like. McCaffrey, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's very cheap issue about it. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's so he, he's an easy one to root for. He did very well in the passing game again, and that's that's if you're running back and you can't pat, you can't catch and you can't pass protect, you don't have a home in the NFL. Hello, Jamar Jefferson. That's goodbye, Jamar Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, he is. Sorry, he, we die. we did actually sign him back to the future reserve contract or reserve future contract. Real quick on those, they signed eleven and they added Doris Fountain for twelve. Those are guys who um, were not on a team roster. They could have been on the practice squad or somebody else's practice squad at the end of the year. It's an indication that we will give them a shot at making the roster and a, a vet minimum contract going into next season. Yep. And they won't sign anywhere else. That's just it's just a sign of good faith. They don't count against the roster limit, right? So, right. Until they actually sign later. Exactly. Um, okay. So let's let's move on. Um, Mitchell Quinion. Quinion, Mi- Quinion Mitchell. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Quinian Mitchell. Um, I just read it. I'm like, it doesn't no. But uh cornerback out of Toledo. We we happen to interview him too. I mean, it's hard not to talk about the guys he interviewed when you're interviews with Mooney. Yeah. But I mean, again, a great day. This guy is gonna be he's gonna be he's he, his stock just keeps going up. Yeah, right? yes, yesterday a- was his best day. Um he he had a pick six or would have been a pick six, yep. had another couple of breakups, like he's He's locking it down. He, he played very, very well. Uh, very, very happy for him. Yep. Uh, he's And uh, we've talked about it with several people, and it was sort of the, the topic du jour at dinner last night. He ain't going to be there at 29. No, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, he's, he's, he's done very well for himself. Yep. And I was, I was, I was happy for him. Yep. Uh, Ricky Pearsall from Florida, wide receiver, wasn't there today. He, he uh, did his work and he was gone. He went home injured. Um, he had a it. It was a calf strain. I want to say, I don't remember. Uh, there were several guys that that were no longer working out. Um, one of them, Rasheen Ali, the running back from Marshall. We just learned from our good friends at WNSP next door here on Radio Row that uh, he tore a bicep. Uh, so that's probably going to wipe out his workout season and. You know, again, not that the Lions are interested in running backs, but this was a guy who, who showed very well for himself while he was here. And uh, you know, that sucks. Injuries yeah. injuries are terrible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then also uh, Jacob Cowan got hurt today. Uh, looked he like did. a cramp. I don't know what it is because he did go get carted off. Um, yeah, he, he got help to get to the cart, but then he just, he just sat in the passenger seat, so it wasn't like a keep the leg. Yeah, it was weird, though, because he was down, and they were clearly treating it like it was a cramp. And then he got up and was sort of going off, and then he, like, seized up and like almost doubled over in pain as he was walking out. So I don't know if he got another cramp like somewhere else 
that does happen. But you know, it was yeah, and he he's a small guy, so you know he's he's very tightly muscled, like he's 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 short, not small. And those guys, you know, with the you know the, the tight, low, small frame bodies with a lot of muscle on it, they, you know, you can get those cramps on that. That's one of the the downsides to that. I I wouldn't know that personally, but <laughs> you have some smaller muscle areas. Um, so. <laughs> Anybody that you, else that you'd like to talk about from today on the, the next? Um, so, uh, Liatu Latu uh, was sitting out. He had a wrap on his left leg today, and he I believe he had a calf strain or hamstring strain, one or the other. I can't keep, I can't keep up with all the injuries <laughs> that came out. So, we got there just after they made the announcements of who was participating or who was no longer participating, and uh, he was one of them. Uh, Ali was one. Pearsall was one. Uh, somebody else left too, and I can't think of who it was. Um, actually, have the yeah, it's not important. Um, Luke McCaffrey didn't jump out at me today. I wasn't watching a whole lot of skill stuff, but he he, he had one red zone, very nice route and catch, and it was probably Michael Penix's best throw of the week as well. Wow. So yeah, uh, Penix again. This was one of the consistent topics du jour as we were sitting in the stands was. Throw with some arc and throw over the middle. Yeah. Like he had a couple of chances today where he was scrambling around. And, and there was one, actually, this is a great example because I want to talk about Tez Walker and McCaffrey. They were the receivers on the right side. Panix rolls to his left. He's left handed. And McCaffrey comes sprinting back from the right side to the other side to come with his receiver. Walker just stood in the back of the end zone, like the back corner and never left. And that. <laughs> That's not atypical for what the effort level we saw from those two gentlemen was. Um, and uh, he didn't make the throw to McCaffrey. McCaffrey tried his best to get back to it. And Walker was like, huh, I'm not, I'm not getting the ball. I'm just going to stand here. Uh, he kind of had a disappointing week. And today was probably his most disappointing day. Yeah. He is not a contested catch guy. And when you're a bigger guy that doesn't get a great deal of separation, you kind of need to be. But to flip. Flip that forward to the American for real quick because we talked to one of another guy that's like that, Xavier Leggett, this morning from South Carolina. Doesn't get a lot of separation. Big guy, contested catch, but he knows how to present himself. Right. He works back to his quarterback very well. He is going to fight for everything. Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, that, that, those are the th- when you're faced with situations where they're not doing a lot of one-on-ones and in offense versus defense, one of the things you're watching is the effort level between reps. Are you encouraging your teammates? Are you, you know, actively participating? Are you listening to the coaches and things like that? And there are, so, there are a lot of guys that do. Luke McCaffrey is absolutely one of them. Mm-hmm. Very engaged. And there are some other guys, I don't, want, I don't want to call them out for it, but you can tell that they're just not as dialed in. Yeah. And so when we're going through this process later and we're saying, I'm not sure that he's cut from the cloth of, of the Lions, or I'm not sure that he's, he's the football guy that they want. Those are the types of things we're talking about. Um, and you'll hear that throughout, you know, what we're talking about. And other people who cover the Lions as well are, are keen on this too. You know, it's, it's it, Russ, actually Russell Brown and I were, were sitting together today and talked about a couple of them. We're like, we kind of liked his tape coming in here, but I, I don't see him like, having the football culture or love that he's not cut from that cloth. Right. And you know, to go back to Dan's press conference on Monday, like we're looking to add a lot of people, but we're not, we're not making exceptions that they've got to be us. Yep. And we saw a couple of guys here this week that, us can, works. that we can say aren't us. Yep. And there were a couple of them on the national, on the national roster who are guys that are, you're going to see in some mock drafts. You won't see them in mine. You won't see him in Russ's. You won't see him in. I don't think you were going to have to be subjected to do any. Um, I'm going to host a few. <laughs> yeah, I, I good. pulled in, so I went. Yeah. I wound up picking people. I'll, I'll give Mike Payton. Mike Mike Payton from A to Z Sports was down here. He, I, I doubt you see those guys in his mock. Um, I didn't even see him out here. Yeah. Did you run into it? I did. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, I talked to him a couple times just briefly. Yeah. I will. I will say this. I'm going to. I'm going to do my horn. I'm going to do Mike's too. Because we're down I was here. That for you. Go ahead. We're down here. <laughs> And we were the first two to publish on Terrell Williams getting yeah. hired. Yeah. And we were both out and about last night. We went back to our hotel rooms or wherever he's staying. I, mm-hmm. And we got them out before anybody in Detroit got it out. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So, so good, good on you, Mike. 
And we'll talk about that news in a, in a little bit. <laughs> but with that, uh, does that wrap up? I think that wraps up everything for the national team. I, I, I mean, I had. I mean, yeah, because with, like the big topic that today. most people want to talk about nationally with that team is the quarterbacks, and we don't care. No. So, no. Um, yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to ringing the bell for the big time fight. When it comes to the soothing light at the end of your tunnel, I will beat your ass. <laughs> I did not expect that to go that way. I know, thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. There was another fight on the field today. Ding, ding, there ding. There was. I don't have a ding, 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 so I just have Dan. I will beat your ass. So. <laughs> uh, I love his tone of voice on that. It's like, so a matter of fact, like, yeah. I will be your ass. Yeah, like, there's no question. But <laughs> uh, Travis Glover from Georgia State came in today. He was he was called in. A couple of players, as we said, have left. They showed their stuff yeah. early, and they uh, took off for the rest of the week. Uh, Travis Glover, offensive lineman from Georgia State, was pulled in today today was his one practice before game day so he's coming in today he gets to practice and then play the game he, they were out there doing one-on-one drills and he was against nelson caesar houston at, at edge and edge from houston and it got really got chippy, chippy. <laughs> and this is only 20 minutes at the most i mean like so stretching and then this and, and stretching happened it's like 20 minutes into the practice and it it was a Big time. They had to be separated. And I have to give Travis Glover a lot of credit. A guy that hasn't been here. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be a little nervous, a little overwhelmed. You were originally invited here. You're playing against guys that, well, accounts were bigger than you because they were here and you weren't. And like it was his first or second rep in the one-on-ones. And it was a battle. Him and Nelson Caesar were going to town. And it looked like I was ready to come to blows. And then, I mean, teammates, coaches, everybody separate him. And Travis was not backing down. He was no, he not having was, none of that shit. I was, I, I was proud of him to come in and have that kind of that kind of grit, that kind of fight to him. That was that was really yeah. good to see. And uh, Caesar is not a guy that's known for that. Yeah. So it was kind of nice to see that out of him. Just yeah. real quick, I found the picture of the guys that weren't there. Um. Of probable interest to Lions fans, Roman Wilson is also no longer here, um, and he's f- like physically no longer in Mobile. I don't know the story behind it, but he's he's not here anymore. Um, JPJ, our guy. But if you're okay. interested in Roman Wilson, you can go back and look at our interview with him. Absolutely, great. We, we got your University of Michigan people covered. Jackson Powers Johnson. Um, he he did enough. <laughs> like, yeah. He, yeah. He, now he did tweak something in Wednesday's practice, uh, but he. He, he was fine. I mean, we saw him afterward. Yeah, we did. He was fine. There we was talked no, to him. Like, no, yeah. no, nothing. But we talked to him. He told us his mom listened and, and hey, look, Jack, Mrs. Mrs. Powers Johnson, yeah. you got a great kid. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. And thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the, that, that's, that's actually something that's important because he came up to us unprompted yep. and talked to us. Yeah. He has, it, like, he, he's interviewed with a ton of people here. We've interviewed a ton of people. He came up to us and like wanted to thank us and to say that as well. Like, so that. That's class. Yeah. That, that's going to go a long way. He's, he's got, he's the full package. Yeah, he, has he is. the full package. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, him, him some more in a minute, but uh, let's stick with the American team. Let's talk about what happened out there. Devondre Sweat, plus, plus, plus on him is what I have today. Okay, so I'm Day. saying something a little different there. <clears throat> go ahead. He has zero lateral range. No. I mean, no. Nothing. No. And if you can... If you can know what he did, if you uh, if you can anchor, and he he's not quick um, there. So I talked to somebody today who is familiar with where he's training. He is somewhere north of three hundred and seventy pounds, and this person predicted that he will run the sh- the slowest three cone time in combine history. Fair enough, but he if you he just walks forward and pushes you back. He's built Close. like Sean Rogers. Yeah. He's not nearly the athlete that Sean Rogers was, not even close. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to make that clear, not even close. And they're both Texas guys. Right. But is, if you want a guy who's going to just push one interior lineman or even two interior linemen backwards and never get a sack, but you're never going to run through the A-gap on him, he's your guy. I want to. I, wanna I will just say that is not, not even remotely close to being worth the 29th pick in the draft. Not in this defense. No. I, I, want, I want to talk w- something about him, though, because there was a great, and we'll talk more about this. We'll get to some other pieces of it in a, in a little bit. But uh, to Vondre Sweat, they did a um, a big man catching contest. That yeah. he had. It was great. It was cool. The defensive <laughs> lineman on one side, the offensive lineman on the one other side, and they were running routes. They and, were. And they were covering each other. 
right? And uh, Tavandre, he caught his. He's got soft hands. He did. Yeah. Line him up next to Penne, put him, make Penne into the eligible. <laughs> it was, it was, it was clearly there. not the first time he'd been throwing a pass. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. He, looked, like he, he even did like a little starter step yeah. away from yeah. the one. Yeah. There was a big guy that did a, uh, a toe tap. I didn't get his number, but he did a toe <laughs> tap was, catch. Yeah, he, he did. did. So it was great. It was, it was fun. Um, our guy, Braden Fisky, made a very nice, like, toe-tap corner catch. That was who it was. It was Fisky. Yeah. It was Fisky yeah. who did it, yep. Now, I want to talk about him, though, <laughs> because our two friends, um, Braden Fisky and Christian Jones, mm-hmm. they were paired up. They were. Fisky was catching. Jones was was, was covering. Yeah. Okay, so you got a big man. Again, I'll look at my Twitter if you want to see how big yeah, Christian, Christian Jones, Jones is. a very large yeah. I'm six foot to six foot one, and yeah. my head comes up to his teeth. Right? Yeah. He is a yeah. giant. He's he makes me dude. look like a midget. Um, excuse me. They so uh, Christian Jones is trying to cover Brandon Fisky, who's a he, he's not little. He's six three. He's a full six three. Yeah. He carries it well. Yes, he he's, he and 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 so you I, you would just look at those two guys and say Fisky's going to win this. Yeah. Christian Jones intercepted the ball and then won the 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 thing for the offense. It was ID. Watch this big guy get it. He's like, yeah, and everyone's cheering. He comes running. Yeah. <laughs> he, he held on to that ball. I think you he know, took it home with him. And, and, you know, <laughs> to the point of, like, we, we, we talked about with him, like, be Texas, Oklahoma, like, Reem from from Oklahoma, the center, yeah. was the yeah. first guy to give him love. Yeah. Like, yeah. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff. Those, the, the, that was really fun yeah. at the end to watch those big guys yeah. catching passes. Those guys did other. pretty well. Um, I'm sort of surprising, bro, how good these guys, I mean, this just shows you how big, how much of an athlete these guys actually are because, the the routes that some of these guys are running, like they're making cuts that I can't make anymore. My knees wouldn't let me make them, and yeah. I'm not, I'm not nearly that size. I mean, God yeah. dang! One of the guys who stood out, and he's a smaller guy, Cedric Johnson, um, who's from Mobile, by yep. the way, Mississippi or Ole Miss, um, uh, edge pass rusher. Yep. Um, he's one of those guys that plays the run on the way to the pass pretty well. Um, the late round guy, uh, but he made a spectacular catch and ran a really like like. Maybe he's a tight end in disguise because he's, he's <laughs> six foot three, or I'm, I'm, he's taller than that, isn't he? No, six six foot three, two hundred forty four pounds. Um, he he ran like I could see him playing tight end if it doesn't work out at defensive end. Yeah. Like seriously, yeah. yeah uh, sure. So it, the little things like that. So we're going to complain about the American practice because it was just look sludge factory slow so but i want to i want to make that the last t- thing on the american okay, team because it, te- it teases yeah 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 else. i know where you're going with that but <laughs> yeah. um we did get to see just little things like that so at the, that was going on in the one end zone at the other end zone was the quarterbacks throwing to the wide receivers and defensive backs going against one another and uh uh I'm trying to think of who stood out in that i have indicators on that so um uh, Jarvis Brownlee, cornerback from Louisville, made a couple of nice PDs. He's long, um, shows some closing burst. Um, pretty good player. Um, he is a little over six feet tall. I want to know. Oh no, he's five ten. He looks bigger than that, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So he played well. Um. I'm trying to think. Uh, his teammate Jamari Thrash had a couple of nice catches, mm-hmm. uh, which he needed because yesterday he had a little bit of trouble flagging down a couple of passes that were like in the air and like. They weren't drops, but like he probably should have at least gotten more of a chance to catch them than he did. Yeah, um, yeah. And it wasn't from lack of effort. It was more from like lack of like he misjudged one of the balls in the air for sure. Um, we know that with JMO. It happens. <laughs> right? <laughs> Not as often as it used. Yes, that's right. But again, the defensive backs on the American roster were better than the offensive wide receivers. Lad McConkey is again. He's going to get a lot of national love. He made one really nice catch, and the rest of the day, you wouldn't know he was there. Yeah. Um. So he's making the splash plays, but in, like the and the other thing with this was their offense. Even when they were doing team like as the design plays, the throws do not go downfield. And Lad McConkey is a downfield guy, so maybe that's that's part of it. The quarterbacks didn't have time oh, ever. The, the quarterbacks just. I, they're on. Well, they're all the quarterbacks on one team. And it's the national team, not the American. Yeah, Munkanki. So they didn't. He didn't get time to get downfield. That may be partially why he yeah. actually left the, because the, it just was not a good setup for him at all to exhibit anything. It's only a chance to get injured. Yeah, and the interior offensive lineman on this team, like I'm just looking at some of these guys, they mm-hmm. had rotten days. I'll tell you one more. Just one more thing about Munkanki. Yeah. Even though with the quarterbacks the way they are, 
him not getting the ball. I'm just, it just makes me a little more cautious right now. If I have to think about my, where my head's at with uh, Lad McConkey, I love saying his name. Um, <laughs> um, I just, for some reason, I've got a, it, it, it's a gut, right? But it, it's a negative. I got a minus for him walking out. I think his, his stock fell a little bit uh, this week just because it didn't work out for him at all. He, he did not get a chance to stand out. And the chances he had, he really didn't. Yeah, but that's not what you're going to hear nationally, right. which is interesting. And, and that that's good. We might be wrong. They might be right. That's part of the draft evaluation process. If everybody felt the same, this would be really freaking boring. I was talking to Emery Hunt today, and we're going to have him on in two weeks. And sure. um, one of the things we talked about is, he's like, I, I'm like, you know, I said, hey, what do you think of this? He's like, you know what? I haven't even started yet. He's like, I haven't done any of my, he's like, my process starts now. This is where it comes down to, and he talked through how he does it. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. have him talk about that on there. But it was, it was really really interesting to talk to. You know, it's okay that evaluations are, and you'll you'll see people's mock drafts will change. Those those are often kind of um, based on other people a lot. People kind of like fish in the stream, just follow each other like a school. Very much. So. Um, there's a couple of thought Guilty. leaders. <laughs> there's a couple of thought leaders, and then there's a lot of kind of school fishy yeah. thing. But. Um, I think uh, you'll see those things change, but you is and where the guys like Emery who puts in the time, and this is the thing we're going to talk about with oh, him. Dear Lord, he does. <laughs> he's at every one of these games. He the is. Hula Bowl. I mean, he was at the Tropical Bowl. Tropical. The Hula Bowl Shrine. Yep. Senior Bowl. He'll be in Indianapolis at the Combine. I'll be down there for most of that time. He's at all of the places. Yeah. He's at games all year long. He spends. He's a color time. commentator for FCS football. Yeah. <laughs> And he spends the time he puts in. So the thing is, is his, his, and it happens, right? Even the smartest people are wrong on this stuff because there's a lot of subjective stuff, but he comes by his takes and his ratings very, very honestly. And his are, you can explain any one of them. And he does in his draft guide, right? It's, it's, it's really great stuff. So I'm really excited that we're going to have him on. And then we'll have him on again when the draft guide's done. They start talking about some of his draft rankings on some of these players. Because he is, he is one of the very few people who had Jameer Gibbs as the number one running back in that class. Yeah. And, uh, and and nothing against Bajan because Bajan, Bajan was handicapped by a weird coach and a poor quarterback, but Jameer was a better rookie. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, I just want to talk about um, from LSU. Let me get his name. Charles. Darn it. He is the offensive lineman. We're number 69. Yes. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Charles Turner the third. That's it. Uh, I meant to write his whole name down. Um, yeah, we talked about him yesterday where he has a great set, but he sets three times in a rep because he gets pushed back. <laughs> He did the, he, he still exhibited that a little bit today, but it was not nearly as pronounced. He held up a lot better, got better pad level, did a better job. Um, he had a better day today than he did, but I'm still not ultra confident in, in, in him as a player. So I, I want to see what so we see out of him and some of his other measurables and Definitely. Um, look at some of his, his tape from school. And then I want to go back to Braden Fisk. Fisky. Um, like I, I think it's Fisk. I think so too. Yeah. He told us we should know this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Brady. I can't remember my own name right now. Um, <laughs> he absolutely has the dog in him. Yes. He is a fierce, like, like the, the concept of a pit bull that doesn't let go. That's what he, that's him on a play. He is incredibly, uh, he's gifted and he's incredibly tenacious. Absolutely tenacious. That's, a, that's I think the word I want to use for him. Love what I'm seeing from him. And he's that kind of, he's absolutely a great guy. When you said he's a guy I see, he's a Dan Campbell, Detroit lion. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. He's and that seeing him guy. in the practices. And we were just talking with somebody before we, we went on air here. And uh, I said to him, you know, I like defensive linemen and pass rushers that have a signature move, whether it's, you know, Hutch's quick spin or Montez Sweat's one arm stab, or, you know, the, the swim, the Bosa swim. Yeah. And he's got, he doesn't have long arms, but he, he steps forward so fast that he can seize that with his with his shorter arms and he makes it uses it to his uses it to his advantage he's he's carbon dioxide he overwhelms before yeah. they know what hit him yeah and he's very good at getting his hands out and into the guy so if if you're a short-armed or if you're a long-armed interior offensive lineman he's gonna kill you yeah like you and you won't know that he hit you yeah. like he and he, he's past you I, I i appreciate that a lot and this is a guy middle round guy rotational NFL player to start and lines need those guys <laughs> public service announcement make sure you have carbon monoxide detectors in your home for real <laughs> yes 
All right. So, Radon wants to if you're still in Michigan. Yeah, for real. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else from the American team that you want to cover specifically? My so um, a, a couple of guys um, that I hadn't really looked at too much throughout the week um, did stand out a little bit, and I'm looking for the tight end. There it is. Ben Sinat from Kansas State. I liked him coming here. He was one of the few tight ends that I'd actually watched, and I hadn't seen much of anything from him for the first couple of days. Um, but he, at the end of yesterday's practice, he did well. Yep. And just see, he plays with a confidence to him that I like. Yep. Uh, he understands that he is an all purpose tight end. And I think look, it's not a great year to need a tight end. And the tight ends on the national team, Theo Johnson's really good from Penn State. The other guys, not so much. And in this one, I think Sinat stood out. And I, I don't want to say that the other guys were bad, but he he, he looked good, uh, especially when they were doing the red zone drill. Spencer Rattler was probably the best. Him or, or um, Carter, um, what's his name? <laughs> from, from, from here. Um, I'm looking at the, the roster. I don't oh, see yeah, uh, Carter Bradley. Carter Bradley, yes. So um, Alabama. He actually... There's some. There might be something there to work with, uh, because he's he got better as the week went on, and I I would dare say he's the only quarterback here who did that. Yeah. And well, Rattler did a little bit too, but he, he under he understood how to handle pressure. Maybe that's playing in South Alabama, playing against the bigger guys. Uh, I'm at with Rattler. Rattler is he's either going to be good or he's not. <laughs> it sounds weird, but there's just no in between with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? This it's. Yeah, he doesn't always make the best decisions, but he's also capable of making great ones. And it's it's really strange. And if you watch the quarterback show that he was on, like when he was a senior in high school, he's still the same guy personality wise too, for better and for worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's he's gonna get a shot for a while. Yeah. Uh, so he he's he's a fun one. Um, there was uh, one of the defense. Oh, I can hit hit someone really quick. I want to go back to somebody because I owe him this. Okay. Um, Christian Jones, because this is this speaks to his character a little bit. After the show, I talked about the show, I had three pluses and one minus for him. He goes, oh, what was the minus? He was like instantly focused on the what can I do better thing. Yeah. And we were like, uh, we, it was like uh, we moved on right away. Like we got into something else because we only had a short amount of time. So we wrapped up. He hung around. I mean, he didn't give a shit about the handlers. The handlers would tell us to wrap up. We wrapped yeah. up. But he's just like stiff arming him, right? Yeah. And he's talking. He's taking pictures with us, hanging out. And he came up, he, he came up to me. He said, just shutting everything down. And he goes, hey, so tell me, what was, what was that one minus? And I was like, oh, man, like I had apologized. I said things were moving so fast that on some of those plays, I would put a plus and a minus. I didn't have time to take a note. Right. I don't have a note for you, man. I felt terrible because he was so genuinely wanted yes. to get better and make sure he, he, he fixed that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like wow. why, why did I get the minus? Where did I lose on this play? Yeah, exactly. And I just it was so fast. I didn't have time to get a note to help him. So I just want to this isn't going to help him either. Yeah. But I just want to make it clear. He got all pluses today. There was no minuses. I was looking well. because I was going to contact him and say, okay, I got a minus for you. I got an answer for you because I owe it to you. He didn't have any today. He did very, very well. So, okay. So, I just wanted to clear that up. No, that, that, that's good. So, he, um, Chris Braswell from Alabama is a guy who's getting a lot of love as a pass rusher. And um, Christian handled him very well. Braswell's very athletic. He does not have a pass rush plan. Yeah. And I would like to see more of that because I think there's something there with his his athleticism and his ability. To, he's, he's, he's got the body for it. He's just one of those guys like, I'm going to try to run through you, whether I'm more powerful than you or I can run around you maybe. Like, doesn't really – we had a pass rusher like that in Detroit for a little while. He didn't last very long. I, I don't – I uh, Braswell's a guy that's – he's he could be con- – conceivably in play in the late first round. I think he's more of a D2 guy, but yeah. Yeah. he's going to need some coaching up to uh, to get that out of him. Uh, but the potential's there. All right. Uh, but uh, the other one, um, Andrew Phillips, uh, cornerback from Kentucky, really nice interception today, had two pass defenses in a row on reps in the red zone drill today. Yeah. Um, now he's he's a slot guy, primarily 5'10", a quarter. He's he's one of the the four guys on that roster. Is super light. The the, the, the Auburn guys are super light. The yeah. Fresno State guys super light. He's really really light. He was the fastest guy here though. He ran over twenty two miles an hour, but he's one hundred and sixty eight pounds. Yeah. How are you going to take down a tight end? How are you going to take around take down right. Jay Hawkinson? And in for <laughs> Detroit, from a Detroit standpoint, we have Stephen Gilmore already who can't get on the field because he's one seventy. Right. Like 
I don't know if there's a market for that. Yep. But he played. He plays the ball in the air really well. Very fast feet to close. Yep. So Andrew right. Phillips from from Kentucky. All right. Um, You've had enough of that shit. Okay, coach. Okay, coach. We're done with we're done with him. Eric. Thanks, coach. Yep. <laughs> um, I want to move on uh, topic here. Um, well, we'll see where we land. I want to talk about the player of the week. All okay. Right? I want to talk about when you, when you think back through all three practices. Mm-hmm. Um, no biases, no other thing else. Who is your player of week? I got to go with Quinion. <laughs> nice. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Quinion Mitchell. I, he he was the best player here. Yeah. Well, I I, I, I won't disagree because I think he he's 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 a very and good I think he will be out very well. He or Latu, depending on the medicals for for the UCLA edge, will be the first player from here drafted. Yep. My player of the week is Jackson Powers Johnson. As he, he, he rocketed really his stock yeah. to the top. He was good. And then he walked out, dropped the mic, and walked off stage. And he's like, yeah. boom, this guy's good. He, cause he de- and, and he's not one of the guys that said, okay, I got my tape. I'm out. Yeah. He came in. He sauntered in, hung out a little bit, had a drink with everybody, killed, dropped the mic, walked out, hung out with the rest of the comics, and then strolled home early. Right? Yeah. He had, I mean, he did it all Right, he did nothing at all uh, that in, incorrectly or improperly. His his interviews, I, from what I heard, went well. Um, really, really good stuff. He's he's absolutely my player of the week. Look, he, it's hard to say that about a center, right? It's hard to say he's the player of the week, yeah. but he was fantastic. He did also play some right guard, um, and that's who yep. uh, could be of interest to Detroit Lions yeah. fans. <laughs> well, you know my interest, right? I saw even in the in the in the, uh, in the comments, and then we asked him a little bit about it. Yeah. Play guard. We got this Jonah situation. If, we, if they don't come to a contract with Jonah, which sounds like they're not going to, um, you've got a guy that can play guard for a year uh, if Ragnow stays. Right. And then when Ragnow retires, you've got an absolute dog that you can put in there who's now got some NFL experience on the line. And now I could take that the guard experience and turn it into snapping the ball and guard. I'll be out on the memory banks here. Didn't, didn't Frank play guard when Graham was here first? Yeah. Yeah. And Graham was the center. Yeah. And they didn't, I don't think, I don't think Frank immediately took that role. No, I, I agree. I think Frank started at right guard. Maybe yeah. like I, this is going back into an area where I don't, I don't want to remember things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cloudy days. But <laughs> I, I was thinking more of the, Cloudy is the IPA, the, the death, uh, the death knell coach. But yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. that, that, that's there. There's going to be a lot of talk about offensive line strategy for the draft. Yeah. Um, I, again, I will reiterate. We have two offensive tackles on the roster, period. There's going to be at least four at the end of the draft, yeah. whether they come free agency or the draft. The free agent tackles, you, they don't hit the market unless yeah. they have major flaws. So yep. do not be surprised when the Lions use multiple draft picks on the offensive line this year. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, we're wasting it. We need quarterbacks. We need that. Like, for a team that's identity with Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson could be so creative on offense because he knows his line is good enough to make it happen. And if they don't have that, it's not going to work. Yeah, that was that was a conversation that I had this morning with somebody in the stands who is very familiar with what goes on in Detroit. Yeah. And I I buy that, too. Um, Again, don't know it. Don't know exactly who they're looking at or anything. But as, as far as the draft strategy. Don't be surprised if they're drafting multiple offensive linemen in this draft. More than defensive linemen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of stuff. Um, there you go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> it's a fun, hilarious. Thing. I'll save that. To each other. Yeah, I'll save that for later. Um, I want to use this as an opportunity to to, to transition from uh, from the Senior Bowl to some Lions news. Uh, we yeah. could have opened with it, but yeah. we'll save the best for last. Um, the American team coach who's here, yes. um, Terrell Williams. Uh, was hired by the Detroit Lions as a defensive line coach and defensive run coordinator. The thing I saw, and we talked about the practices, the American team practices, how slow they were. Yes. If he can slow down the opposing offenses as much as he slowed down those practices, we will have no problems in the 2024 season. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I don't think that's indicative of his coaching style. Or what I, you know, the no. things we've heard is how much good. He did in Tennessee with yeah. their line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop someone here. Uh, I talked to uh, my good friend Teron Davenport, who covers the uh, Titans for ESPN. 
Tehran? Tehran. 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 Tehran is uh, Tehran is one of the reasons why I have a job at USA Today, and I'm very grateful for him. And I gone up with him and spent about 15, 20 minutes talking about Terrell Williams because they're close. They're tight. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's he was visibly upset that he's leaving. Um, Tehran was because mm. like this is this is a guy, you know. He's really good. And one of the things that we've heard and Tehran talked about this, he turned Jeffrey Simmons from being a pretty good player into an all pro. He turned Tyre Tart from being an afterthought late round pick into a good starter and got him another contract somewhere else. He's worked very well at explaining things. And you could even see that a little bit today. He was the head coach of this team. He spent all day, all day with the defensive linemen. So, and teaching technique, um, correcting things, hand balance, tech, you know, smoothing out little intricacies, figuring out what, what makes guys tick and like what Toronto could not say enough good things about him. And I, I trust Teron uh, very much. He's a great football guy. Great, great guy off the field too, by the way. But, uh, I, I was very encouraged by that. Um, and he has offered to introduce me to coach. Um, so it was strange. Um, some people thought it was weird. Because he's Terrell Williams is out there wearing a Titans hoodie. And he has agreed in principle to join the Detroit Lions. He has not actually signed a contract yet. And Teron said that it was very important for Terrell to finish his obligation here. Like he committed to be the coach of the American team. He's gonna do that. And then he'll go to Detroit. Um so no no worries about that. And uh people were like, go get him some gear. I'm like we're in Mobile, Alabama. We don't have Lions gear here. <laughs> it's Saints, it's Falcons, and it's Panthers gear primarily. And I just one, I saw one Texan shirt, and I was happy about that. <laughs> I see Titans. Titans love. Yeah, there is, there is a lot of Titan stuff around here. It's not that far. Nashville's just up by 65. Dave Schultz, full of WNSP as a big Titans guy. So. Yeah, yeah. WNSP 105.3, 100.5, something like that. I forgot. We, 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 we're big fans of Schultz. Good job, dude. Good to, yeah, we, good we, to. we had to meet a lot of cool media people this week, both local and like regional. It was, it was really good. It was, it was a good group of, of, of folks. And I think th- this year in many ways was one of the best years uh, and, and and most well run senior bowls that we've been to in a while. So we have to give a shout out to Molly, Molly Middleton. Molly Middleton did a great and, job this week. Yep. Easy, her assistant. Yep. Um, Jim Nagy, Jim of Nagy course. Did, Jim I mean, Nagy did a very good job coordinating things this year. I think he paid more attention to the details this year. Um, yep. Dave, um, I cannot get his last name. Dave, not Glover, Dave. I can see him. He's the director. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, D- Dave, sorry, I don't have your last name. I'll remember soon. Uh, it'll, as soon as we stop this recording, I'll, I'll remember it. Yeah. Uh, but Dave, a- absolutely good. I mean, they did a fantastic yeah. job. They, I mean, we have six employees running the whole yeah. thing. I mean, and we're going to, we're going to, we're like, people are going to complain, like, oh, so Chris has his bag of Reese's here. My we are at the cups. Reese's Senior Bowl, and these are the first Reese's we've seen all week. <laughs> and people complained about that. Yeah. I complained about it. I don't even like them. Like, nah. you're sponsored by it, like, maybe, but I think. In terms of some of the other things, our infrastructure here on Radio Row is a lot better than it has been in the past. The you know, access at the, the stadium was good. I thought the, the I thought stadium was was the access was fantastic. We yeah. had some great stuff. Just wait till next year. The coordination we've done with Molly about some of the things we'll do differently. These post game wrap ups we'll do from from the stadium from Hancock with yeah so that'll be kind of fun that'll be cool uh we'll have some other some other things we've we've got uh in store for next year as well but we, we this again we've we've honed our process and gotten better as you saw this year the coverage has been far surpassed what I, we've done yeah, previously and i i think we've i i will toot our horn i think we've done a better job of of interviewing with better questions too yeah absolutely um and that that's good and i i uh, just some of the players here, man. It was so it's so rewarding to meet these young men that are trying to live out their dreams. Like and, and you know, it's a stress. It's a very stressful time for them. Yeah, absolutely. we're we're often catching them. Like when we talked to Xavier this morning. It was what six fifteen a.m. Yeah, yeah, like he clearly had to be like he had a lot going on. Like he had just eating breakfast on the way walking down the hall here yeah. to sit down with us. <laughs> now I'll tell you, I talked to a guy from WNSP. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about it. He said, we had him at three o'clock yesterday. He was exactly the same. <laughs> okay. All right. So he, he is definitely just a country boy. And, yeah. Uh, that's his, that's his thing. And I didn't, like at first I was like worried, but as we talked to my guy, I was he, like, he, he opened him. up, like he started to be comfortable a bit. Yeah. yeah it was, that's who he is. And that, that, that's great. You know, so at just seeing these guys, like 
There's so many guys that I'm going to be rooting for. Um, the Notre Dame linebacker here. Cam. Cam. Yeah. Cam Hart. Oh, he's a, he's a cornerback. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. We talked to Cam. He was great. Cam was great. And uh, that's an, if you're going to want to study film of guys who might be potential Detroit Lions, Cam Hart might might be one to watch. I was so trying to set you up. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> but we have a linebacker we want to talk about from yeah, Notre Dame. Um, uh, J.D. Bertrand and Bertrand, yes, yep, yep. Um, our, our, our colleague Russ Brown um, has been a big fan of Bertrand. I talked to him a little bit and uh, sees him fitting in very well in Detroit. Uh, I need to watch more game film on it. I'm familiar with him. I don't. I can't recite off the top of my head. Like I, I actually went to a Notre Dame game this year. And he played well in that, but like I, I need to study more. And you know, so if you're expecting like we're going to come out of the Senior Bowl knowing who the Lions are taking, like, no, nah. we'll know better who they are. I think we'll have a process of elimination. I think that that's the exact yeah, right yeah. way to look at it. We have learned this week who they're not going to look at, mm-hmm. and we'll again pay attention to the mock drafts and who's not in them that you might be expecting to see in those. Um, I, for Lions Wire, I'll toot my own horn for a little bit. I will do the a blank position for every round of the draft, even if we don't need. I will do one for quarterbacks, even though we're not drafting a we're not drafting a quarterback. I can confidently say that seventh round. I doubt it. I don't think that guy's <laughs> I here. Start out there. <laughs> just, I mean, if you want to take Sam Hartman in the seventh round, I'll I'll just look at him longingly. He's he's fucking beautiful, dude. This is the Brady Quinn replacement. It is. This is he really is. It's is. crazy that they both went to Notre well, Dame too. Well, Brady's out of his prime. He's aged out of his prime. You've got to find a new one. <laughs> but it's funny because like <laughs> Sam Hartman was walking down this hall right here the other day as That's he's terrible. walking in, and people are looking and like, like yeah, like yeah. he's he's legitimately like that good looking, <laughs> um, but can't play all quarterback all that well. Although I will say he played well in the red zone drill today for yeah. the most part. He was better than Rattler. He was better than. Um, was the other quarterback? Michael Pratt. Michael Pratt from Tulane. Wish he had a better week because I saw him. I will say this about him. We were on the same flight and we got into the, the baggage claim of the area and he was super nice to a complete stranger woman. He picked up her bag. He carried it out to her car, came back in, made sure that she was okay, got everything done. Like He probably knows that people are watching, mm-hmm. but... I got the feeling that's the kind of guy that he was. And that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why we come here to learn these things and to see things like that. Like, uh, I think that's a story that's not told though. Yeah. Across the NFL. Yeah. These guys are guys who have been like, they spent their whole time. Like the guys tomorrow are going to, they're doing the parade, but then they're going to children's hospital. Yeah. Right. These guys are doing these things throughout their careers in college and and, and, and the senior bowl and the NFL and the, the, the player reputation gets sullied so often by the bad apple. And, you know, there was a study, it was, it was really illuminating that, um, felonies among NFL players are lower than the normal, the the general disbursement of the population. Um, these are genuinely wonderful human beings. And and I, for a long time, I was kind of surprised at how many were so great. Now is, I just expect it. Like it's the oddball who was like, and it was, and it was cool to me. Like a lot of the parents got in today. I met, uh, Jalex Hunt dad um from houston baptist or i'm sorry houston christian it's the longer houston Baptist. sorry guys um <laughs> defensive lineman very athletic and reformation um, he, he, he needs some technical work but there's something to work with there he's he's a he's a late round guy that you know i could see i could see the lions having some interest in him late round um didn't do a great deal here but he's one of the like, he's a developmental guy but just watching his dad watch him like that's so cool man yeah like he, he drove across from, from Houston. I've, I've made that drive before. It's like six and a half hours. Like, yeah, that's really sweet. And seeing like the moms of the Auburn players were all together today. There's a lot of Auburn players because we're right by Auburn. And just seeing the, the, the sorority of those women, like getting together and hanging out, like that's really cool. <laughs> it's really yeah. cool to me. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you get a, you get a sense for where these guys are coming from and how much it means to the people around them that they're here and they're, they're making it and they're they're living their dream. And to watch your kid live their dream, that's so cool, man. It's, it's love that. fantastic. And I watched the Notre Gate, the Notre Dame guys, um, across the board, the entirety of them, including Sam Hartman, um, 
there was a family. It was a, a mom and a dad and three kids. Yeah. The one little yeah. guy, he was like oh, a real, yeah. like yeah. at the beginning of practice, yeah. there was like music playing low, but there was really no other noise. Yeah. He was just standing there with his thing, fingers in his ears. He wouldn't listen to anything, right? Yeah. But at the end, everything's wrapped up and it's like yeah. last practice. Everyone's, you know, getting the hug. There's some media time. And then, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. every one of those players came over and signed stuff for the kids, signed balls. One of them gave them uh, gl- uh, gloves. Yeah. I mean, it was great. And Sam Hartman came over and he had stopped, yeah. got stopped a couple times on the way, but every time someone stopped him, he told them, one minute, one minute, yeah, I'll be there. It was super communicative. Uh, communicative. Also, yeah. the Miami guys at the end, we saw the guy with the, the giant Miami flag yeah. every Hurricane player like beelined over to him. Uh, Cam Kitchens, the, the safety, who didn't have a great week, um, but He's going to get drafted day two some point. Um, was was talking with like some media place, and he saw that all those other boys were over there. And he he's like, "I'm sorry, I got to go." And he ran to go sign for this. And it was it was two guys and like three younger kids, probably like elementary school age. Yep. And they all spent time with him. They took pictures. Like that's that's what it's all about, man. I want to show you one more thing. What a parent moment. Okay, and this is this is great. Um, <clears throat> Javon, <clears throat> excuse me, Javon Baker is out there. Yeah. And let me see if I can get it. Okay. It starts here. There's three pictures. Let's see if I can get them. Yep. You can see them there. Yeah. And you see that hand coming down, right? Yeah. Talking. Yep. And right there. Dad. It's dad. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Yeah. Dad's yelling at him because he messed up on a play. Yeah. This is just like when a kid's playing soccer at eight years old. His dad's on the side. He's got NFL coaches there for him, oh. and dad still coach him. It's really that's cool. And, and he wasn't he was he was yelling at him in a, in a, in a supportive way. That, right. if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, he wasn't. You're doing more. He was very yeah. much trying to help his son. Yeah. It's so great to watch how involved and how connected these families are, and watch these things as these kids try to break out into the NFL and really make something of these careers in football. Um, it's a great event. Uh, great connectivity between the families, the parents, the kids, the whole thing. Um, really, really glad and, and well done. Congratulations again, Jim Nagy, yeah. Molly, Molly Middleton. Uh, the whole, yeah, the whole, we're happy the whole with it. And just one, one thing to, to build off what you just said there. We in the media try to be aware that the, the parents are there and the families are there and they're watching. And so you will see from me and from quite frankly, most people that have done this a lot, you'll see positives. You're not going to see a lot of negatives come out of this yeah. because you don't want, it's tough to be that guy. Yeah. Um, we, we, we will do that as it gets closer and it becomes more apparent, like where kind of guys are going and stuff like that. The hardest part about this is to really yourself from the person because there's great people who won't make it. Right. And you want, they deserve it. Yeah. It's just the, the product in the field that isn't what they need to put out there. It's, yeah. That's the hardest thing. You know what? There's a, there's a quote I heard. And I've been looking for years to find out who said it. So if somebody finds it, please find, let me know who it was. But uh, the quote goes something like this, paraphrased. There is nothing as sad as seeing a man realize his life, his life stream will not be met. And that's where a lot of these guys are at that tipping point. And it's a, it, it's a sad time for those guys and their families and all the work they put in. And you listen to the guys we interviewed, all the investment their, their parents put in and time and money, getting them to the right place, the right schools and everything else. So yeah. it's it's tough. We try to be as, as positive as we can with these guys. And again, when we are negative, as we get closer to, you know, and really honing down what those skills and those abilities are, it won't be, you know, eliminating people with prejudice or anything like, like that. Right. It yeah. is about the skill set and the yeah. ability set. Unless he's running around with a bong gas mask, you know, Deshaun Watsoning people will probably be a little pejorative in that, in that kind of a case. But, you know, there you go. All right. Let's hope not. <laughs> and I want that to become a verb, actually. <laughs> not that I wanted it to happen, but I want it to be remembered. <laughs> Fair enough. We will have the draft in Detroit. We will have a draft party in Detroit. Limited attendance it's a it's, it's we'll, we'll talk about that yeah we'll get to that but it, it's um it, it's something to look forward to just 200 square feet just having <laughs> just having the event in detroit it's going to be fun yeah. it's going to be cool seeing all these guys there were a couple guys that we're doing a trip to malone's yeah, absolutely in honor of frank yeah and we'll all go zero to frank while we're there and the uber home <laughs> yes please don't drink and drive please don't we're free the PSA we're PSA today we are the PSA team all right let's call it a show let's get this wrapped up let's get packed up you've got to change hotels I've got to get everything packed so that I, I gotta can get my, my flight I have to be at the airport at 5 15 a.m. we've got to hit wet willies 
<laughs> Love my willies. That's probably going to be a drop. All right. Remember, don't forget about us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. If you donate at least $5 a month to the cause, you will get access to the Slack chat, which is the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet. Talk about what we see, what we hear, uh, what we know in uh, in the land of uh, rumors and news and lions and, uh, and otherwise. Uh, so it's a great place to be, great place to hang out with Jeff and I and a whole group of great people. Also follow us on Twitter at DET Lions Podcast and at Jeff Risden. DET Lions Podcast. It's a show that's where you get all the news and information about when we're going live, when we're going live, when we're not, what we're doing. If there's a show change, time change, whatever. That's the one to follow because that's where you get all the information about us. Also, go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com and subscribe to the podcast. Because when you do that, I get to come into your ear holes automatically. Yeah. AMSR. Thank you for tuning in, and we're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions Podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, and no problems, because we got your draft picks, and we're your Detroit Lions. Thank you. And Reddit Connect. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone, for following us this week. Join us soon next Wednesday for our next show.